Hi guys, this is the third episode of Flix Watcher Podcast. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm Helen. And I'm Kobe. On this episode, we're going to be talking about Knox, the Netflix original documentary. And to talk about the film, we've got Josh from Footballistically Arsenal. Not sure how you spell that, not sure how you say that, but the details are in the show notes. And also Dave from Fortitude Magazine. Come find us on Twitter. Tweet to us. Agree with us. Disagree. We're at Flix Watcher Pod. The website flickswatcher.tv has full listings of each episode and subscribe and reviewers on iTunes. All the films were available on Netflix at the time of recording. There was going to be bad language. There's going to be spoilers. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to this edition of Flix Watcher. And today we are joined by Josh and Dave. Do you want to say hello, Dave? Do you want to say hi and uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, where you're from? Yeah, my name is Dave Hudson from uh, Fortitude Magazine. We're an online entertainment magazine for 16 to 24 year olds. We cover music, TV, everything. And yeah, thanks for having me. No worries. I'm Josh. I run a company called Play With a Legend, which is there to provide members of the public the opportunity to play football presumably with former footballers and we're an agency for former players and uh, I do have a regular podcast I'm part of which is called Footballistically Arsenal which as the title suggests is a a weekly look at everything Arsenal Football Club related. Amazing if you love the Arsenal. I take it you're an Arsenal fan. I'm a a big Arsenal fan. (laughs) It's good fun. You can find (laughs) us on iTunes. It's good fun. (laughs) Being an Arsenal fan or the Uh, podcast? Being an Arsenal fan. Well, it was better the first sort of half of my life. The first 15 years of supporting Arsenal were full of of winning Premier Leagues and a bit more trophies. The last 15 years have sadly been without the same number of Premier League titles. But I'm sure the good times are just around the corner. Well, let's hope for you. So you're the one, you chose Knox, which is what we're talking about today. Yes, I did. Why, why did you choose Knox? Well, one and... of the reasons, I, I, I went to the University of Leeds for my degree, which was criminology. So that, I guess, is, is part of the reason this film was so interesting from a criminology sort of background. But more so because underlying, I was at Leeds 2006 to 2010. And this story, you know, with, with Meredith Kircher as a University of Leeds student, I think was an underlying theme of, of sort of my entire time, or it felt like it, of, of university. It, it was the constant story that was in the in the local press, certainly the Yorkshire Evening Post would, would follow the story meticulously long after the National to sort of stop following it on the, it, yeah. on the daily. And then, of course, the Leeds student newspaper, you know, which was, you know, had people that, that knew her personally still sort of involved in the paper – was forever, you know, talking about it and keeping it, obviously, importantly, in the minds of students. And it was generally, because I think the story went on for so many years, and, and still, I mean, to an still, extent, we, we, well, we haven't really they made a documentary it. about it. Of course. <laughs> because it's still not been solved, it, it's kept, never really gone away. So when I saw that this was on Netflix, and I, I should probably say I'm, I'm quite new to Netflix. I've only sort of had a Netflix account for the last four months since I moved in with my girlfriend, and we sort of spend more time watching TV and, and having that Netflix account. So when I saw this was was on there and you, and you mentioned the idea of coming in and choosing something, it seemed like an obvious choice. Oh, fantastic. I... No, well, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I put it to you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Like, so give us a... a little, that, was, that was a good summary of why you chose it then, Josh. So why did you... Yeah, give us a synopsis of what actually happens in the... Well, look, I appreciate it. you mentioned a disclaimer that you give sort of a, an idea of a spoiler, or yeah. which might happen. But but essentially, she's a, she's a foreign student from the states, as I say, from well, Knox's. Sorry, yes, yeah. Knox's, and and she is the the main the main suspect really around this this death of this British student. And I think there's an interesting similarity you could almost draw between why this became such a huge story for the British public in a way that Maddie McCann did. She was from a, a white middle-class family and that made it perhaps at the time a, a huge interest. It was something people could connect to. It was something the Daily Mail more than any other newspaper maybe picked up with them and the journalist we'll, obviously we'll that talk about we talk shortly, about him yeah. they're, they're mm. just for those who haven't yet watched it there's a journalist who is is basically narrates almost a story of from the journalist perspective of what it was like to cover this story from a, a small town in Perugia Italy that had clearly never dealt with a, a case this big on the international scale, global yeah. media scale and and part of the the failings really of the of the police is also a, a huge theme in in the story. So it, the the documentary basically follows the 
incident on the on the night really the, the death of Meredith Kircher and tries to navigate its way through what is quite a complicated series of trials and mistrials and police ineptitude and eventually we, we, we don't really necessarily get the answers we, we're hoping for as an audience and we're, we're left really to our personal views about who perhaps is responsible and who isn't and who was treated fairly and who was treated unfairly during the during the whole, whole process. process. Yeah. What, what do you reckon, Dave? What was your what was your knowledge of the story and the trial and were you following it even when when it was going on? In the hazy days of was it two thousand and seven? Maybe yes, I was, September uh... two thousand seven was when um, was when it went. Sorry, September two thousand seven when it was when Meredith Kircher moved for the beginning of that mm-hmm. academic year, yeah. and it was November first two thousand and seven yeah. that she passed away. So you were at university when yeah. she was there. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. So yeah. I was preparing to do my GCSEs, so. It was it was in the background of just life, like you just knew it was going on, but you didn't really know what was happening. And I, three years later, started studying journalism, and this story actually came up as part of my course. And it was it was interesting to look back at it now because you think that oh, tabloids can't get away with it now, and the 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 hype and just the over inflation of the entire thing. And I felt that the documentary makers actually did it justice. It was so clear cut. It was it was for you to go away and make up your own mind about it. I just thought it was brilliant. And like with making a murderer where it was just like, oh no, this guy is innocent and yeah. the, the government is corrupt and you know, they're all against him. It's like you at one point you're like, oh no, she did it. And the next minute you're like, oh no, she didn't do it. And then you're like, it 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 gets it's it's a roller coaster. So you actually like the idea of it kind of leaving you hanging to some some degree at the end of it, rather than the well, I mean, I mean making a murderer is quite an interesting comparison because mm. it kind of leads. I can you... point out, I've not got to the end of it yet. Okay. So it well, it leads you down a garden path. Mm. Yeah. So this is just a void of just which way do you want to go, and either way, you're probably wrong. You don't know. Nobody knows. I thought it's. I mean, what do you reckon, Helen? I mean, I I really enjoyed it in terms of a documentary. It it does what documentaries are meant to do. Mm. It's to present the size of the story and remain impartial and basically leave you in a position where you're like, okay, well, did they do it? Did that happen? And it's particularly interesting because obviously you've got Meredith there and you've got, what's it, Raphael? Scalatari, is it? Yeah, him as well. I'm sorry Um, if I've just abused that name. (laughs) And then obviously the person from the daily mail nick pisa yeah and the police as well but obviously nothing from the person who was actually convicted in the end so it is kind of missing that input from there yeah. but it's looking back at it now you're kind of fed all this from the media about her you know being this kind of crazy mad sex person because they found a picture on the internet and linked it to this and they keep feeding and feeding and feeding all these things. And it's just one thing that one young person did mm. once, ended up having a photo on it and ended up on the internet. And that one thing led to this whole label that was created. So then you're saying this is like a cautionary tale for not posting your drunk pictures up on Facebook. I mean, um, it, it could happen to, could you know, it's, it's, it, it's very so. It could happen to anyone, you know, if you are in a situation where something has happened and there is that much stuff on the internet about you that can be used against you yeah, and yeah. people are going to use it. And, you know, the the media kind of rode with that one and they're not a court, they're no. not the police, hmm. but in that one moment, they're there influencing the court's mind, they're there influencing, you know, fellow police officers who might sort of go, but yeah, but she's she's one of those, you know, she's into this. And they're like, well, the other doesn't say that. Yeah, but we know we've seen the pictures, we've heard the stories. And then that kind of gets into the mind and they're going, well, maybe if she's into that, then she could have broken that or that would explain why her DNA is on that handle because, you know, she was tying someone. And it's just, it kind of really, really blurs what you're watching and you just have to step back and go, okay, this has all been presented from different points and you're just left as like, well, I don't know. But obviously you're, 
I'm interested to hear, because of your background, that you did a degree in criminology. I did a degree in criminology, and then I did a master's in journalism. So maybe the two you, aspects yeah, of this film I mean, were... you've got far more knowledge than me. I mean, there's yeah, the thing, got... you know, when CSI came out, now everyone's kind of, and now making a murder in this, everyone's kind of like, oh, yeah, we all know about DNA, and if the DNA is on that, it could have come from when she brushed her hair, or we have all become like these forensic experts and being able to read who's like a killer and things like that just because we've watched the TV programmes and things. But you... Yeah, I, I think that is a, a, is a problem that, that people mistakenly think that, you know, by sitting there watching a TV series, they are the equivalent of people that are... The people they're watching have done 10, 15, 20 years of experience are somehow on their kind of on their kind of level. I, I think you brought up an interesting point about the, the one person that obviously has been convicted is the one person we don't hear from. Mm. Uh, and I, I wonder why. Uh, it's kind of not explained because I don't, at no point is there kind of a subtitle as being like, we attempted to interview Rudy and w- our request was declined. And the and like, so we, why, do, why is he not interviewed? We don't know. So that's a frustration, I think. Did, what or it, it didn't say we weren't able to interview yes, him for legal reasons or, or because it's an ongoing case or any, any disclaimer. There was nothing other than... Because Knox is obviously there throughout again in this narration manner of, of the story from her point of view so it's i don't know it's kind of like uh, you you want to and, and maybe they couldn't do it but, but you kind of want to hear from the person who who has been convicted but who who is still we should say appealing so he, obviously why why do we not allow to hear what he the other side of things yeah. what i mean what was your opinion of having Knox so well you know, throughout. Well, it's great. But, yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of how seriously do you take it? Because nobody has had more me, or well, not nobody. I mean, American presidents will, today will have more attention on them. She has had huge national attention, and therefore has had a, a lot of people around her mm. to advise on how she should be presenting herself to the wider world. And therefore, especially when you agree to do a film like this, and we don't know again, I don't know how much she was paid to do this, but I assume that for a small fraction of that money that she was paid, the best possible PR advisory team could be around her going through every small detail of how she articulates everything from her facial expressions to her you know, sorrow at just the whole episode. So she's been so probably media... It's an amazing performance. Yeah. Oh, she's incredible. Yeah. I mean, she should be, you know... If, if it's an, different uh, circumstances, she could award, have been an yeah, actress. Yeah. yeah, and maybe that worked, but maybe we're not. Maybe I'm viewing her negatively because of the huge negativity towards her from the press from the word go. Maybe we none of us ever gave her a fair chance. When before because, you before you saw her on the TV on the in the documentary, yeah. and this is an open question to all you guys. How much had you actually seen her speaking in an interview in that kind of personal tone before. Apart from that appearance she did, was it on Ellen or Oprah or something like I could never tell you. Years (laughs) ago. And it wasn't years ago, it was like three or four years ago, where it seemed as if like everyone was just attacking her anyway, as in like she, she, they made her out to be kind of like mentally ill. Yeah, they, 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 I mean, watching her, Mm. there, there is something there that, Mm. you know, she's, there is something just, a little bit odd about her but is there but the oddness, that's what i thought is the there oddness <laughs> doesn't make her a killer though so mm. it might be that she's a she is a bit odd mm. and you know she probably has done some slightly strange weird sex things probably but you know just because you're a little bit odd mm. doesn't necessarily mean you're capable of murder so I, it's I, I agree and also more than that just whether she was odd or not going through what she's gone through is, is going to make anyone you know Odd, if we can continue to use that word, I th- I'm sure the person I am would be vastly different, having yeah. gone through what she's oh, yeah. gone through, regardless yeah. of her can you, can involvement, even non-involvement. Start to imagine what she has gone through. Whether she's yeah, sure. I mean, she was incarcerated crazy. for yeah. some yeah. time. I mean, it's not but even that. even like the behaviour, then the thing about her kissing her boyfriend on the day of the murder. Yeah, I mean, it's not the wisest of decisions, but if you're there and you're with someone and you're going through a traumatic time. And the person you were with at that time is at that point, whether you've been together a day or a week, the closest <laughs> person to you emotionally, mm. then you may want to have some physical contact with them. Mm. If you know you're being filmed, then you're probably not going to do that. But for her in that position, you yeah, know, it's... It's difficult. I guess I'm not sure any of us have hopefully been in a similar situation where we, we, we you've lost someone so aggressively and in, in such a sort of horrific manner to know how you would react until you yourself are in that position. I mean, the one thing that sort of stayed with me 
come in the end of a documentary was that she, of course, not, did, did accuse Lumumba, her, yeah. her employer. This is, this and, is and like the is odd thing, normal, isn't it? That is not, you know, <clears throat> the, the rationale behind that, I, I'm, I don't know if I'm satisfied with her explanation of, of why but, she got to that point. What's I, that? It doesn't fit in any of the stories or it doesn't, it's not a strong enough conviction on her behalf and there's there's no evidence towards that and it's just a slightly strange thing to suddenly accuse someone very randomly just to remind us all how that conviction transpired because it wasn't all based around misinterpretation of a mobile phone yeah and it just it just seems to be like an odd kind of i don't mobile phones weren't as prolific as they were as they are now mm. and obviously i don't know you had limited character characters they could show on a screen and just mm. some people can misinterpret things very quick very yeah. quickly but as you know, someone or, who's investigating a you crime you could be sat in a room and there could be a lot of very scary people saying who did it who's the accomplice who was there yeah you know giving all kinds of stuff oh you know we heard reports there was a man he was this high who else do you know who who's slightly weird and you know she could have been saying mm. oh you know maybe i saw a guy who followed her from a shop once or you know, and then suddenly she said his name and they've gone, oh, what, who? And, you know, he's someone who could potentially be a suspect. And, and also you, at you that time... You jump on that and then again, you're you're, getting these, you're planting this name in and she's giving more information that might not be true and they're getting excited and taking it away from her. Mm. It's... I mean, if you look just, at... It's... You, you, how I'd react, I've no idea, but we've seen it as in making a murder where you can get someone to say something this is what I was if say. they're in a, a situation where they're not sure how they're going to get out of it or they're not quite smart enough or they haven't read what kind of level they're in. Mm. How, how did you feel that the Italian, the prosecutor, I think his name was Mignini, how do you think he came across? Because I, he sort of... Apparently he has also had quite a lot of cases involving kind of satanic yeah. rituals and things. and well, that's Before or after of, this? I'm, pre, pre. Yeah, pre it's, he's mm. kind of got this thing. I think he's got a real kind of issue with women who may be openly sexual and sees them all as kind of sex crazed witches. That's what I got personally from it. And he sees young women as being quite devilish and they'd kind of need to be stopped. I found it interesting because obviously he is a, a experienced long term man who has been in a police enforcement environment. Mm. And you'd think after that long in that environment that ultimately you have to respect the law. You know, oh. if, if a court of law has, has given judgment in a certain way, yeah. then, but he doesn't seem to, he, he sort of comes across being like, well, I am right. Yeah, she did it's it. It's just a shame that the, the court of laws have seemingly got this one wrong. Yeah, he, he, he sort of comes across absolutely Inept. unequivocally, not yeah. even like any small piece of doubt whereas the whole thing just seems surrounded in doubt and uncertainty and botched he seems, forensics uh, and... he seems oddly certain yeah. which was i i found that you know one of the one of the interesting themes that sort of stayed with it because he he spoke didn't he at length about how the body was covered with a sheet and how that meant that therefore it, it was a female yeah because a mm. a man wouldn't possibly think to do this oh that, that i mean that's conclusive again, evidence that, that's, mm. yeah, how, <laughs> you can say that, that you know in experience of the last hundred murders i've done what if it was half covered with a sheet yeah. i mean yeah. oh, 50 50 he sort of came look but i i don't know i guess it's the editing although i thought the whole thing was well put together and you know obviously it, it looked as a good documentary it, it looked visually good it was very easy to watch mm. even for you know i was watching my girlfriend who who is not a criminologist or you know, had really had any awareness of the case more than, you know, knowing the name. But yeah, I, f I found him a slightly, you know, a great character for the documentary. If I was making, producing that documentary, and this is days well more than mine, I'd think, yeah, brilliant. What a what a character to have through it. Only because he's so sure in a, the whole thing is surrounded in doubt. I mean, while I watched it with my wife and the kind of thing we came to the conclusion of, I think it was kind of clouded by the fact that the people presented on the screen, Meredith Knox, the detective and the Nick Pisa, they're the main three people mm. we heard from throughout the course of the documentary. Mm. We couldn't really emote with them in any way, shape, or it was, it was difficult to emote. I wanted to get on, on Knox's side. Did I say Meredith Kircher was on? <laughs> it's, it was hard to get on Knox's side when she was talking because, you, like you say, it did seem that she was too polished. It did seem that she was media groomed for it. Mm. I mean, what were your thoughts then, Dave, about how the whole thing was kind of put together? I think it was put together beautifully i think 
So you're, you're a really big, big fan of this. Yeah, I think it was great. I mean, I think the difference between this and, say, Making a Murder, and I'm sorry to keep doing comparisons, is that they did leave a fair bit out. Well, this did all. Yeah, yeah. yeah this did. Well, obviously, Making a Murder is, a, what is it, 10, 10 yeah. episodes? Yeah. I think it's longer yeah. because it I've longer? got to about 10 now and I'm kind of waiting for it all to end. I think they could have done with a bit of editing like this had this this had some yeah. very everything yeah. was very concise and yeah. it didn't didn't really go back over anything so yeah. once they presented one kind of thing that was it yeah and then they kind of moved on so it was like one case the one court case yeah and then the other one it didn't go back and then oh and then when the in the original one blah 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 blah, blah. yeah and making a murder they keep on going back into that yeah. into that into yeah. that caravan or yeah. shack that he lived in, didn't yeah. they? And keep him yeah. reiterating about different policemen mm. not being there or being there or what times they turned up. Mm. Was, there's a lot of talk about the DNA on a knife in a random, mm. in a different house, which I thought was, yeah. I don't know, like say, Josh might be able to give us more information, but DNA and a knife in someone else's house, I'm sure mm. you cannot hang much no. on that. No, no I mean, it, again, it comes down to being to argue the argument you want to present to a jury mm. you know it becomes part of the argument i thought what, what dave was saying there about it being nicely put together and, and I, th- I i quite like it in the way that i'm watching also uh, narcos at the moment yeah and you occasionally get real <laughs> footage from the actual time intertwined with obviously what, you what know, the modern, drama, dramatization you know a, a dramatization of modern, and and so too with this there, there was the real police footage it, it, it is quite graphic to to sit there in and see and obviously the footage you see of Knox being you know i think kissing her boyfriend mm. she kissed we've got the photos in front of us as we speak you know that worked really well the, the idea that you can you can sit there and sort of look back at how it was and and you particularly get a feel for how frenzied the media was and, and obviously we we will maybe we'll speak now about the the journalist nick it was nick wasn't it from the daily mail yeah and yeah, pizza and how he pizza comes something. across you want to a piece of something pizza something yeah. Yeah. It, it at least puts you it really clear that what it was like i mean it was it, people couldn't get into the courtrooms it was just a free-for-all of, of no doubt probably people from the local police thinking this is my chance mm. to to get on the international scene perugia Hopefully, we'll never see anything like it again. And I, yeah, I just thought it, it, it sort of went well with all of it. I, you, you said to me, didn't you, that you weren't sure about how he came across as a journalist? Yeah, so that was interesting. I mean, I'll, I'll go to Dave first because he, mm. he made the, the little the slide pun there, Nick Pisa. Pisa something. Yeah, so I think... Yeah, I'm not going to say what yeah. I called him when I was watching So what, what were your thoughts before going back to me on, on Nick? I... C- considering, because you're one, you're one yeah. that's fully, you seem fully behind the film. Yeah. Uh, did you ever watch that film with Jake Gyllenhaal? Is it Zodiac? No, the one where he's chasing Nightcrawler. The... Nightcrawler. Yeah. You know the producer in it, where she was like, "People don't want to see poor people being murdered or anything," because it happens all the time in yeah. the hood or whatever. It it felt exactly like that. It's like a middle class white American in Italy. Like that's just that's just sensationalism and throwing sex and like a satanic ritual you know that's just that's just like that's selling papers like before it's even started so it it felt like they were just writing to a brief Mm. and but they didn't realize that that brief was ruining ruining a a 20 year old woman's life like if 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 amanda knox was a man would the same amount of media sensationalism be part of this whole thing do you think it would have do you Venus think if it was a man, do you think you'd well, probably... They, you'd... Well, then they were working on the idea that it was all three of them mm. at one point. Yeah. That was the kind of thing that they then sort of pushed. Yeah. But she was the orchestrator. She yeah. was the one in control. Yeah. So you're you're right in what you're saying. It was never either one of the other guys. It was yeah. it was a, a sex act threesome gone wrong. She orchestrated it. She got Rudy to kill her. Yeah. She did this. She did that. It was her idea, et cetera, et cetera. I think it was one of the first times where people's social media had been used in reflecting in, the, in mainstream news because I think this Foxy Noxy came from her own MySpace page. Yeah. And, and obviously that, <laughs> you know, is a journalist's absolute dream to go with this Foxy Noxy and the fact that there's this kind of, you know, background in slightly alternative sexual intentions. So it just worked brilliantly for them, but it, it all helped to just present this argument from the outset that she she was she was the absolute focus. But it, in terms of Nick, again, I I kind of want to defend him. I, I sense out of the four of us potentially, <laughs> because I, I've got friends in that news journalism world and, and friends that you know 
in the 10 years that passed, sadly, have, have probably been sent to cover more terrorist attacks or, or whatever is going on around Europe, the, some of the atrocities we've seen. And when you're out there, you have a responsibility, I guess, to your newspaper as your employer to, to get the best possible story that you can. And if that means going off and finding someone who will speak to you for a who needs a bit of financial incentive or, or whatever it might be, as long as you have a credible source who is willing to give you information that, that you have no reason to believe untrue, then I think you're entitled to go print that story. Now, if I was a member of Meredith Kirch's family, I sure as hell w- would not want that story printed. But if that wasn't Nick, it, it's another bloke like Nick doing that, doing that as a job for the Daily Mail. It's not the role... I have a problem with it was the way Nick did it with such some kind of glee. He kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he enjoyed it. That's, that's it's an amazing story. He knows he's got sent to cover this story. He yeah. sees it's front page news. He lives in a world of where he's not a footballer scoring goals. He's a journalist trying to Selling score from front, yeah. front page. But it's not even about saying that, but it's, I think it's about in that world, it's slightly, it's ego. It's ego. It's, can his name be on the front page? Because when he wants to retire age 60, it'll be how many front pages of a Daily Mail did he, did he do? And that's what will be hung but, up in that, his But that's house. the thing on this, in this course, this documentary, that's what he kept on referring to. Like, I've now got another front page from this story. Yeah. And, but he didn't lie. No, I'm not. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure he's not lying, but I can't can't empathise with him in any way, shape, or form. But I think that's just you as a sort of personality would never go and do that as a job. Yeah, yeah. Not as, because there's many people like him. But 100%, if I had, if I, when I was thinking about producing this documentary, if I was, and I had a a really straight down the road journalist who would have played everything, but wouldn't have gone out to seek anything slightly alternative, wouldn't have dug in the same way. Or I had Nick come along who who did that and Mm -hmm. is going to speak in the way he did. For the documentary, he, he's the villain sake, in this film. Yeah, you need yeah. you need Nick yeah. to actually give that that side of things, and also he he helps present this kind of frenzied environment that that was going on all around it, which is quite important as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I don't think he comes across as likable. If a, he he clearly wouldn't care, for, you can tell from his yeah, he he's doesn't care. What, he's friends. not going to listen to this and go, oh my god, I can't believe yeah, they said there. that I was a dick. <laughs> he, he'll be he'll be there going, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, I did but my. Still, bit. they know my name. They know my name. Yeah, we've said it a few times in this podcast, and not so. and probably him getting us through that documentary was another kind yeah. of front page oh, kind of style. Well, it's come. It's, well, it's come back. You know, into... local celeb now goes into the pub. Yeah, we saw you, man, on the TV. Mm. Yeah, because previously people just saw the name. Didn't didn't pay any pay, didn't pay any attention to it. Now they can put the name to the face, and he's there with a smug smug tiger. In. Well, maybe we're doing him a slight <laughs> disservice because you know his job was to to go and find nuggets of information, to to go and find something that his competitors weren't doing, and I think I think he probably I mean, achieved that. So, I, I you know much as he comes across as unlikable, I think he probably is is quite good at his job. If you were the Daily Mail editor, you want him on your side. He's that kind of guy. Yeah, but then, you know, this is at the same time phone hacking and, you know, all the deplorable things that the media was doing to ruin people's lives. And it's just like, it's it's a continuation of it. It's like, you, there's there's got to be a morality issue with these, these newspaper journalists. And that's exactly the reason why I didn't go into that kind of journalism, because it, you're just ruining people's lives and you're not actually giving anything to society. You're just you're just selling papers for the sake of selling papers just because you saw a girl's cleavage on MySpace and she murdered someone. <laughs> I, do, I, I would defend him again, I think, I yeah. think from that. I think with, with Nick, he has, you know, and we shouldn't associate him with, with phone hacking necessarily that went on, I think, at, at different, I think at, at the Mirror, certainly, but not at the Mail at that time. So I think it's unfair to, to brandish him in that manner. But... I think ultimately he's he's doing his job and he could argue it's in the public interest. That is a, a story that absolutely captured the, the nation. And I, I liken it only to the Maddie McCann. I can't really think of another example where something has happened abroad to an English citizen and has dominated news for, for years to come. And therefore, a, any small aspect of that story, I'm sure now if we were looking back at what was the most read story of the time or the most clicked on story on the I'm sure it was any nugget of information just because I think it's people could relate to they could think well my daughter or son is, is at university and has thought about studying abroad it's just something that could resonate in terms of just horror and, and it made a great story and and Nick was one of several people out there he just happens to be the guy in this film yeah and look we we would well, are we are we telling him he shouldn't look into someone's background online and 
and do, it's not that, do their and, side again, of Again, it's not, it's not, yeah. it's not yeah. what but he, he did. Can it's only, just, yeah. But he can present it in his way. And, it, you know, as long as he's not, you know, making anything up or taking anything untrue, he's in, entitled to do it. And, and I'm sure he's still doing that in whatever stories he's covering. It's about providing value. It's not, it, it, this is this exactly what is the issue with the British media at the moment. Like we've seen with Brexit, we've seen with, you know, so many other things like just pulling up stats and pictures of like, you know, migrants for the sake of it just because you're playing into people's fears that doesn't provide value that just creates further division and that just creates hysteria for no reason uh, look i'm not here to defend <laughs> the day yeah, yeah. yeah. no, i'm not here to i did I'm some work saying, yeah. experience or yeah. free lots work for the bad online about nine years ago yeah. but i'm not here to defend them at, mm. or to to suggest I, that they're, they're not in some way yeah. divisive i'm just here to, to argue the point he, I think, you know, was doing his job. He, there was no phone hacking. There was there was no lies. There was just interpretation of of what they were able to find at the mm. time from a from a small community, from no doubt police officers that were happy to speak in a time that was just complete frenzies and, yeah. and they couldn't cope with. And you know, it, it, I, yeah, I think it's a point Helen said before. He is the least likely bloke to care in the world what people think of him. Mm. That's a great way to <laughs> summarise him, isn't it? I guess. Hence, why he works for the Mail. So, yeah. <laughs> With such happiness. I actually read some conspiracy theories on this. Well, is he an alien? Afterwards. Not, no, he is an alien. <laughs> no, I mean, you've got to read like Reddit are conspiracy sometimes. Uh, I don't know if I can just. I, I, don't, I don't, like, don't want to go down hold, that path. Hold, 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 hold with me here. <laughs> is it Rudy? Rudy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So the theory is that Rudy was actually an informant for the Italian government at the time, or right. something like that. Right. So he was he, the reason why he was able to get away with it is because he was basically untouchable that was the that was the, the conspiracy theory but he didn't it. get away with it he was convicted. well he the reason why he was managed to leave the country was because he was a, an informant for the police and the government or something like that and that's why they covered everything up and that's why they made it like a massive mess sounds and that's like a why, different film they need to do i know right it just sounds <laughs> i mean like the the idea behind the fact that they tried to swap him out for the other what's his name the the bar Barman. owner is like you know swap him out for another black guy like it's fine it's done it was just it was like it makes sense for them to want to do something like that but at the same time it's like if he was able to get away with all of this like ha- like what else is being covered up yeah, by I, the Italian police that is quite for I think that what happened was a young girl was very unfortunate and lost her life and through perhaps forensics that weren't quite as up to date as they should have been because they, they hadn't had the experience in this. It was completely shocking. You know, there was issues with maybe DNA that we're never going to know who did it. Someone has been convicted on the basis of quite strong DNA, but we're also never really going to know what, Amanda Knox was actually doing on that night and whether she did have any involvement and for you've got to kind of look at it for the coaches they can at least say well you know at least there is someone who is serving time for doing that and we're kind of here and we are discussing it is a documentary it's yeah. not obviously presented as a film but you know we're kind of discussing something that is entertainment which has been presented in a very stylized and slick way but it's still, at the end of the day, there was a poor girl who died in a horrific way and we still don't really know what happened. And it's it's this kind of thing with these kind of things that are made that it's very difficult to kind of not get swept up with the whole, he did it, she did it, and like, oh, this is, you know, really exciting. And, you know, we've kind of like brushed off the thing that, you know, the, the weird sex things that could have been involved. But this is someone who's real and with the people who are still there living with what's happened from it, it's kind of an an uneasy thing to be watching when you're kind of getting into it and enjoying it and then realising that it's not fiction, Mm. it is real. And it's very clever how the filmmakers have made this and presented this very, it's a very fine line between, you know, the, the villain, the journalist, like the poor victim, Amanda Knox, the slightly crazy police officer. They're all kind of almost like characters in a film. Yeah. But they're not. They're actually real people presenting, you know what they see as the facts. Exactly. So it's Should we get should we get to the clever. scoring? I think, of yeah, the, we should do a little bit of the uh, our unique scoring system. 
I need to. So the first score is the recommendability score. How how out of five these all are? How highly would you recommend this to other people? Yeah, I, I'd go four. I think I think personally, and I, I maybe that's because you know I've still got a lot of friends with the University of Leeds at the time, and I've been talking about it with them since because I think what what this did do is kind of recap. It, because this kind of tells you if, you if you haven't followed it from the outset as i said my before my which my girlfriend hadn't then this is a good way in yeah. 85 minutes of being up to date in, in terms of where we are w with a, a horrific story as helen said so it, it's 100 percent recommended i think you know before you're watching it you're thinking does this do a good job of arguing both sides i think yes we have spoke before about how there may be a few missing voices but I assume that's because they couldn't rather than they avoided from yeah. the way it's, it, it sort of transpired. So for me, it's a long way of saying four. <laughs> <laughs> what stopped you giving it five? I, I don't think it was, I don't think there's anything new in it in a way. I, I think, you know, which if you'd read everything, I, I don't think you learn anything from it. So to come out with a, a Netflix exclusive documentary that's, that's such hype, Maybe you're hoping that there's something there that we, we don't quite know, that you haven't read. Obviously, I learned things in it, but I feel I only learned things because maybe I hadn't read every article or kept up to the mm. with the case maybe since I left Leeds in, in 2010. And there was obviously a story to tell in that respect. I so guess because... I think no five just because of that fact. Nothing new. A lot of the best documentaries I've seen are where they've really uncovered new mm, footage 100%. that just not... Has, I, I, I can see a point there. Dave? I would give it a four and a half. Mm. You know, it's I I like the the commentary on the relation, the media relation to like just reporting of these kind of stories. You know, it's just like, especially in the age of like social media and you know and just content being just so easily available. It's mm -hmm. like the way that it was just inflated. Like I think it was it was a perfect commentary on it and. The thing that I, I felt I felt exactly the same as like Josh, I didn't find anything new. Like it just orchestrated everything into one point. Like it wasn't like actually you know, she did do it. No, uh, it's like <laughs> but then equally um I, I like the fact that it let you come up with your own conclusion. And that's yeah. Four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm kind of similar things. So I'm gonna give it a four. I think as a documentary, it's very, very, very well made if in terms of Yeah you know, how it's put together, it's excellent. But again, it is just, it's a little bit too much of a slick summary and it doesn't really probe anything. And it kind of doesn't really ask any leading questions. It just kind of presents it and sort of says, deal with, deal with that. We've just given you that, make your own minds up. So it, it would have, it doesn't quite have that jaw dropping moment or anything like that, but it is, an excellent documentary. It's an excellent example of how to make it look good yeah. and be involving. I think I'm going to go for a four myself. I know I knew very little, to be honest with you, about the case. I knew it was going on in the background, but didn't you know the ins and outs. And I think, like like you say, with your with your girlfriend, there, Josh, it's a good kind of recap. And I, I don't want that. Sounds like it's almost playing it down a bit, but I think it, it was a good summary of what happened in over the course of it. The re only reason I wouldn't give it a five, I don't know. It, just there's just a few things about it. Maybe maybe it's one point specifically for Nick Pisa. Because yeah. I think I think a lot of people take offence to him. Yeah, I think a lot of people. My my, my girlfriend was in that in that camp as well, yeah. just being like, What a terrible bloke, <laughs> almost like cringing every time he came on but screen he was just and, doing and his hating job. him. But yeah, we had we had a similar argument to what we yeah. had in the in the last <laughs> twenty, thirty minutes defending him. So you've got the repeat viewing score. Yes. Is that the next one to give? Well, I, I think for me I wouldn't rush to to watch it again. So I'll go one out of five on the grounds that, you know, in maybe six nine months time or years time if there was someone else maybe who i'd seen again from university days who i hadn't seen one and they hadn't watched i would be willing to sit through it again it's it's only as i say 82 minutes i think i just checked but yeah it's not something you'd rush to. i think you know you you watch it once you take it in you you learn you know you recap the story and, mm. and you wouldn't rush back Dad? i guess i could i would i'd say the same as josh i mean if some more evidence came up and I'd be like, okay, I'll rewatch it to see if how does this fit in with what the story that they told. But really, I mean, it's I mean, unfortunately, in the age of Netflix, you just move on. So. <laughs> it's a sad, a sad. You're gonna give it a one as well. I'll give it a one, I'll give it a one yeah. I mean, I, I'm gonna give it a two. 
I mean, it is very short, and as we do know, I do quite like a film that especially is on less t- than an hour and a half. Especially on TV, on I think TV. it's a bonus, isn't it? This is good. Again, I would watch it again if new evidence came up or, again, like, you know, someone who hadn't seen it and we were faced with what to watch on Netflix. But I don't think it's it's unwatchable, but, again, it doesn't really have that urge for you to kind of watch it again and see if there's anything that you've missed. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm a two. I'm, for the same reason as... you. Sorry, you said two, didn't you? Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm a two, but for the same reason as both Dave and Josh, but I think I'm just a bit more of a lenient scorer. <laughs> I, th- I, think I think just what I heard was saying that it, it didn't make me want to go back and start again by any means, but it probably did make me want to, as I did, go on the internet mm. and look around a little bit more about the story and things that had Were come missed. up, and I wanted to go and read back the way it was portrayed in the media at the time, and and you know maybe learn a little bit more or, or look at a few of the articles that were written by you know Nick or in the media at the time. So, but not in terms of reviewability. Okay, the small screen score. This is perhaps the hardest one to describe. It's kind of, do you think it's perfect for watching on TV or do you wish you'd seen it in the cinema? And it's kind of it's kind of open to your interpretation as to how you how you score it. I'm going first, which is tough, but I'll go four because, I mean, it's not massive action. There's no amazing action scenes with explosions that you need to kind of feel that wow factor in the cinema. It's ultimately a relatively straightforward documentary. I mean, I've got no idea out there, 82 minutes, when we're just literally looking at one person in the middle of a screen, whether that be Nick or yeah. Amanda Knox, is obviously as simple as it comes. Is it's a you know a, a glorified vox pop, and therefore you you do not need to be in a cinema to kind of enjoy that in the same way. So I think it's a, a, a perfectly enjoyable in a small score environment. So I'll go for Dave. Yeah, I'd give it. A, uh, it's perfect for Netflix. It's perfect for watching on TV. Like it's mm. no montage of heck. You know, it's not like it's not. It's beautiful, but it's not like, ah. Oh. Did you watch Montage of Heck on this, in the cinema? Or do you want to watch it in the cinema? I want to watch it in the cinema. Oh, okay. I, I saw I that in the cinema. Oh, did you? Yeah, was was it good in the cinema? Yeah. yeah. See, there we yeah. go. <laughs> uh, yeah, perfect for your TV Friday night. So what's the score? Four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. Helen? I, I'm, I'm going to get a five. I mean, it is perfect for Netflix. It's under an hour and a half. It, the way it's presented is completely absorbing. You know, I had 110% attention with this. That's the next score we're talking about, engagement. <laughs> so this could be quite high. Yeah, it's a five. Netflix original. Yeah. It's really short. You you know, you can watch it on a computer really easily. It, yeah, five. Yeah. Well done, Netflix. More <laughs> like this. I, I think I'm giving it a four. I don't think I would, if this was on in the cinema, I would just wait until it came on TV anyway. I don't think I would have thought the need to to watch it the documentaries i've loved in the cinema have been the music documentaries amy, amy winehouse and re- more recently oasis one direction um yeah <laughs> that, when that comes out if that has it I been out been right? out oh shit i'm not missed it i didn't know that engagement score how engaged were you whilst watching the show do you feel the need to check your phone did you I'll I'll stop it four and, and a half it. i, I oh, really? think i agree i think maybe i i'm one I, I looked up how long it is in advance i do that i don't know if you do that as well i like to know how long i'm going to be sitting down on the couch for so i can prepare myself <laughs> and therefore i think knowing it's only 82 minutes 82 minutes you can commit yourself to to that time period and, sure. and actually, That's a fair it, point, actually it it flows you know very well mm. there's loads going on to sort of question you i i had no sort of urge to get up and break and get away from it so yeah a very strong four and a half from me Dave. i don't ever give a perfect score but i'll give it 4.9 i mean i just think that <laughs> you do point nine to kobe you haven't told me about this I can it, do whatever you want yeah. um, we're using an excel spreadsheet here guys to calculate it. It, it it was on level of making a murder of uh, kind of engagement and really yeah really like, i was just sat there and i was transfixed which is so hard to do and it just it just left me with so many questions and i was just like i just want to find out what how did this and this happen? And yeah, it was perfect. It's great. Yeah, you do want to sit there and just go to like, you just wish that Knox was just, and you go, yeah, but what really? Come yeah, on, exactly. Just come on. That's like, why no I wanna... cameras. Just tell yeah. us. We ought to know. And that's why I went on the conspiracy theories because I had to find out more. So yeah. it was, had... Alan. I'm going to give it a four. Now for watching it, it had my attention completely all the way through and, you know, no check in the phone. I was kind of surprised when it ended. Probably, you know, oh, so not really going that far but I you know that was kind of it it kind of ended and that's also a little bit where my kind of interest in it sort of ended and you know it's not really compelled me to look into it anymore or maybe you know see if there's any other kind of documentaries that have been made so okay that's where it just loses the slight mark there I think I'm going to go for four based on Dave's scale of zero to making a murderer 
no <laughs> no no See, near. I'm I'm really struggling with that I'm about episode 10 yeah. and oh, you know I've not watched it for nearly a week because I'm just like I well I, I plowed through that in like two days yeah, I couldn't I couldn't put it down yeah so I don't think it's anywhere near as engaging as making a murderer I'm, I'm gonna give it a 3.9 let's go to point nine but on the on the other side <laughs> and then you get these overall scores so the, I, I take issue with your scoring system here Kobe while we're here what? I, just, <laughs> I, I, I just think this re- repeat viewing is an unfair one to put in these categories well, it, I think a film not wanting to go back and necessarily watch them doesn't diminish it in terms of you know it, it's greatness I don't, I don't think it has to be I, and especially with a documentary and I, I quite like documentary yeah I, was also, I think more so you're unlikely to watch back a, quite a factual documentary and I think you're so much less likely to watch and I, I kind of dislike the idea that my score here that I, you, you've ended up with a 3.375 very precisely <laughs> is going to be brought down so aggressively by me giving it only a one and repeat viewing because I overall would like to give it more than 3.37 so I, I, I take issue with your scoring system but that's how it works and that's how that's well, the rules I, of the game I bow to your and, system and that's how you've we're got a point out. though because as much as I love making a murderer I wouldn't watch it again I, w- I think I would I would watch it again but I would watch it with less intent. I'd have it like, in the background and stuff. So anyway, the overall, the overall score for this is 3.6. Josh, it's fair to take issue with this, And uh, they are kind of... It's a unique to, scoring system, unique, as I yeah, said. It's a unique <laughs> scoring system, open to interpretation. And you can see why it, these kind of things work for Netflix and why it's not It's not just any film scoring system. It's Netflix. It's a TV scoring system. Whatever. Well, there's a quality throughout. As long yeah. as everyone's been scored in the same way, we can't call it. Well, exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, with, with, with that, well, before we go, if you'd just like to remind us of um, where we can catch you elsewhere. I know that we will link everything to the show notes. To You know, of course, it's been, it's been a pleasure to, to do this. Now, a real honour to be invited onto your podcast. So thank you for that. You, you can listen to the Footballistically Arsenal podcast on uh, on iTunes. Just search Footballistically Arsenal. I think if you just search Arsenal, we're number three. So if you, if you have <laughs> too little time in your life to type the entire word footballistically which is football is tick alley and then just go with arsenal and find <laughs> us and uh, you can listen to myself and boyd hilton from heat magazine and we're joined by two guests every week i still have no i've listened to i've still have no idea how you spell it i just go it's just arsenal podcast isn't it on on twitter, on twitter it's yeah. a lot simpler yeah arsenal podcast yeah, yeah, we were quite podcast. early it started in like 2000 arsenal podcast that's yeah that's where you need to go well, it started in 2010 when there were far less podcasts now i think arsenal as a club we've got so many podcasts from all over the world so there's loads but we are we are there at arsenal podcast on twitter or just at josh underscore landy on twitter as well cool thanks josh um, <laughs> if you just google fortitude mag or fortitude magazine you'll find us if you get to dumbledore and uh, who else is in that fortitude tv show it was like Dumbledore and like I've, Doctor Who. No and if you get to Dumbledore about. and Doctor Who, <laughs> you have gone too far. <laughs> okay. That's all I'm going to say. But um, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Fortitude Mag. And if you want to follow me, it's I am Dave Hudson on everything. So Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Thanks a lot, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. We talked about Knox there with Dave and Josh. Josh from Footballistically Arsenal and Dave from Fortitude Magazine. Please come and subscribe to us on iTunes. Visit our website, flixwatcher.tv. And if you want to join us on Twitter, we are at Flixwatcher Pod. Big thanks, of course, go to GL Productions for the excellent editing skills and to Mighty People for the tunes you can hear right now. You can find them on SoundCloud. 